Hello, and welcome to The Night Girls. This is episode 496. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I am Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. Today is Thursday, the something, 13th it's of August. It's the 13th. Yep. It's um, Pearl's heartworm pill day. She gets her heartworm pills on the 13th. I'm sure she's stoked about that. She actually really enjoys them. Yeah. They're like her treat when she They're comes just another to treat for Pearl. Yep. <laughs> She's used to him now. So, yeah, I will go first because Leslie already told me before we started recording that she has to do move some I, stitches. Yeah, I have to transfer some stitches. So She's got very important knitting business to do. So um, I will talk about my sock, which has not gotten a lot of love because I have not been in meetings this week. So it's just been a little bit of... Um, knitting during downtimes i knit this while watching some tv and then um i was watching book trailers to link into my schoology because my um, school district is using schoology for our distance learners and um while i was watching those trailers and interviews with authors i was knitting on this so just a little bit i'm almost to the heel this is Rainbow Hexies from Coloring Book Yarns. I'm knitting it on size zero needles. I magic loop. So these are, I think, Chai Gu. Is Chai Gu the red cord? Yeah, that's the red cord. Okay. So Chai Gu size zeros. Um, they are so sharp that I had them in a knitting bag. And then I had that knitting bag in my Tom Bin backpack. And um, I was basically playing the floor is lava in my office because so my office connects to another office. And for some reason, I had locked my office door when I left. And then the next day I forgot my keys. But um, they're using the room beside my office as like a storage room. And um, because there are certain things that we can't have out with COVID, like my beanbag chairs can't be out. So they were all stacked against that door but they were stacked on top of chairs that had been flipped. So I had to jump on top of the chairs that had been flipped. This is like workman's comp, like yeah. dream. I can and hear the I... OSHA people watching going, oh. <laughs> and then I climbed over the beanbag chairs. And then I went through the door that connected to my office all because I was, I forgot my keys and I didn't want to tell my boss that I forgot my keys. So, <laughs> but then I put them in my backpack later in the day when I went home for lunch. So I didn't have to do that again. But um, I don't know. Did that story have a purpose? I'm not certain that it did. Um, no. So the needles went through oh. the bag they were in and went through my backpack. And as I was climbing over chairs, I was like getting poked in the back with these needles. And I was like, what is poking me in my backpack? And it was these needles had come through like the two layers of the project bag and the two layers of the Tom Bin bag. That's how sharp they are. Wow. That's the end of that story. That's all I got. So this is the only thing that's gotten a little bit of work this week. Here's the other one. I'll show you the completed one. This is a pattern from Wendy Johnson. It is her toe up sock with a gusset. So you start with uh, Judy's magic cast on, or at least I did. And then you work your way up. And there are increases that happen, and then the heel turn, and then more rainbowy goodness. It is all the rainbow. So I'm hoping to get this. You guys might not see this again because I'm hoping to get this mailed, or at least to Leslie, who's going to mail them for me. Um, because Michael does our postage. Mm -hmm. Uh, this weekend, I'll do a drop off at her house of stuff so i'll mail this and like patrina's stuff that i have to mail her and um someone claimed a sock head hit hat that i knit back in march so that needs to be mailed there is mailing to be done yeah um i have some dye that amy florence ordered to my house because mm -hmm. uh dharma was not shipping to the uk that i need to send to her and all that jazz so yeah, that is the only thing that has gotten work on. But one of my brand new coworkers, he's been a coworker for a week and three days, had a little baby boy yesterday. So I got to 
use the gift bin. Wow. And uh, take advantage of the fact that I already have baby hats in it. So she's new to the school and immediately going on maternity leave. Yeah, he is. Oh, it's his okay. Wife. He's the new basketball coach slash um, American history teacher. Hmm. So, and he seems like a very nice guy. Cool. We discussed Stamped by Jason Reynolds pretty early on after I met him. So that was fun. But yeah, I've had like two encounters with him, but he's getting two baby hats. So <laughs> he's going to go home and tell his wife, this weird lady. Yep. Made she you just sits, stuff. Around, sits around waiting to give baby stuff. <laughs> But, yeah, so I'll have to cast some. I'm actually really in the mood to knit more baby hats, so. Because they're, like, simple, brainless, immediate satisfaction. Yeah, you finish one in, like, two hours, usually, and you're done. Yeah, that is what I need in my life right now. But, yeah, that's it. And I have um, no FOs. And I have a smidge of spinning that I will show you guys in a little bit. But what are you working on? Well, I don't have all the colors that I need, so I can't work on that. Um, I worked a little bit on the sock from uh, the yarn is from Hip Strings. Uh, it's their double dip. Um, dot is it called double dip? I feel like that's not the right term. I don't know that that's the right term. Double minor. I'm sorry double minor it's a targi nylon blend and it's um in the raven and bengal colorway so not a ton of progress this is not something i usually um it's not something i've worked on this week i've had other things other like mini goals i've been trying to hit so um, i knit my socks on a size 2.25 millimeter which is a u.s size one um, if I knit them on zeros, they would be bulletproof. So um, my knitting on zeros is like Leslie's knitting on twos. Yeah, hey, I have some of that sewed at my house. Gauge is important, yo. I um got some A and W root beer to make some A and W root beer floats. Sounds delicious. Next time I see you in a month. <laughs> Or eight months. I was going to say, I, I imagine it'll be gone by then, but it's a good <laughs> thought. Um, so the other thing, I've been working on some squares, some granny squares. I'm doing them in this red color now. Um, it's nothing exciting. They're just granny squares. It's for uh, Sandra Paul Cherry Heart Pattern. Um, all Giant of this information. granny patches. Yeah, it's just a... a big square of different colored granny square or a good a big blanket with different colored granny square patches in it um all of our show notes are on our website which is the knit girls with three l's.com um the other knitting i've been working on is shadow lines which is a suzanne summer pattern and uh, I've been working on this since before we went to Scotland, so February maybe. And it's knit, March at least. It's knit out of lace weight, um, two different colors of lace weight. Mine are pretty close in tone or hue. One of those two I can't remember. Um, so it's knit as a triangle at first until you get to a certain point. And then you put half the stitches on hold and then you knit out the other side. So you've got like um, stripes during in the triangle. Then you've got this two color brioche and then this different stripe pattern. And then it ends on a single color of brioche. Did you just finish it? I finished this, the one side. Wow. So um, I screwed up the brioche decreases several times before I sort of got in the hang of it, but I did finally finish um, half of it. Looks great. And then kind of thought the whole damn thing should just be in brioche because I like it so much better. <laughs> uh, you are a brioche 
fanatic. Yeah, well, it's I prefer it. Um, and I was going to, I just switched the stitches on the other half from a holder to an active needle. And I was going to start it, but I left one of the colors downstairs. So, Aww. gosh, if only I had another crafting project with me. <laughs> I think those socks could be used. Yeah, or the granny, the granny squares. squares. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's that. And the other thing I've been working on is... Um, oh, your tale of woe. Yeah, so I talked about this last week. But uh, this particular project is a sampler that I saw at our friend Sharon's house in New Jersey. And through the magic of technology, I'm going to put in a picture of her finished one here. I can't uh, see it. She was so kind. <laughs> Send me a picture of it this week because I had chatted I like with, with Leslie. And, um, So I saw it in her house several years ago when, when I lived in New Jersey and I went to her house several times in that time frame. And every time I just, I, you know, I would just, you know, spend some time looking at it because it just made me happy for some reason. And I put out a, um, a watch on eBay for the kit because it's a 1972 Paragon sampler um, or Paragon needle craft kit. And it's called the Gourmet Sampler. Gourmet so I finished. Sampler. It is. Yeah. Oh. So I finished the carrots, cabbage, and cucumbers. That <laughs> you one. put your little mark, your progress marker. I love yeah. it. And then I finished donuts. Ooh. And so I'm starting on eggplant. Purple and plump. So I got the eggplant done, and I'm just doing the text now, which is done in a chain stitch, a really, really tiny chain stitch. But I'm at sort of a an impasse here. So all of our more seasoned crafters, I'm talking about you ladies who um, are of retirement age or perhaps a little past <laughs> that, uh, who might in their stash of stuff, of craft supplies, have some embroidery thread from this company. So this green that's used for all the lettering, this green is from a company called Perry Lusta. Um, I think it was a UK company, but I'm not sure. It came with the kit. But for some reason, I did not get enough of this green with the kit. Now, I bought it secondhand off of eBay, and um, it was already opened, but none of it had been stitched, but it had been opened. So, you know, this almost 50-year-old kit and the Perry Lusta thread isn't made anymore and hasn't been made for about 40 years, from what I can find. And there is no DMC color that matches it exactly. Um, at least I've been to three different craft stores and I haven't found. A I wonder BNC if there is a conversion just, chart online. There are for several companies, but not for Perry Lusta. Oh. At least in my searches on the internet, I have not found it. So for all of our possibly embroidery thread hoarders <laughs> or collectors, if anyone has this, I would be in your debt if you can find some and sell it to me. It's Perry Lusta, and in the colorway, it's sort of a sea green. Again, it's this green that's in the letters, and the colorway is 169. And um, again, it's Perry with a P, Lusta. I'll put it up on the screen here. I'll put the text up on the screen here. Um, I found one person who had four schemes of it, and she was in the UK, and with shipping, it was going to be almost $50. And that just seemed excessive to me. Um, if I can't find any through our wonderful viewers, then I may end up doing that. Because you can't buy this stuff anymore. It occasionally comes up in like estate sales or, you know, but a lot of places aren't going to list out the individual company yeah. and color. They're just going to say, here's a lot of yeah. threat, you know, figure it out. 
so I've hunted on the internet. I haven't been able to find any except that one place. Maybe you guys can. I'll be happy to trade a pair of like in socks or something like, or, or just buy it off of you. But I'm looking for Perry Lusta color F169. F is for phyllo crochet, crochet, but it's just, uh, or cotton rather. It's just color 169. And it's that sort of sea green that's in the text. So that's my plea for crowdsourcing. So are you going to move on to uh, non-text portions I of will. the thing? I, I hate to do that because I really wanted to do the blocks at a time. Um, but I'm down to my last, like, let's see. Did I bring it up here? I thought I did. No, I did not. But I'm down to my last, like, um, like yard like yard of a group of six threads and I want to be able to keep that just in case I have to color match it like I need enough of it yeah to be able to color match so I found some colors that were close with DMC but if I don't get an exact match every time I look at this I'm going to know that they're different and it's going to bother me <laughs> so the other thing you could do is you could rip out all the letters I could and redo it in a different color I could and it may come down to that. I mean, if I yeah. can't find it, it may come down to that. Because there are DMC colors that are close. Yeah. So. That stinks. Anyhow. I'm sorry. Hopefully someone will be able to help me with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's what I've been working on. Kobe and I have been playing Paper Mario. Uh, we beat the last boss last night. But we have to go back wow. and forth all the stuff, apparently because he's not good with just beating a game. He has to go back and get every, like, collectible and hit every box and, like... Oh. Yeah, so... Well, it's more time together. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much it. I didn't do... I did a little bit of spinning this week, but, like, a quarter of an ounce, maybe. What did you spin on? The I spun on that... Um, Warm woolen mittens. Oh, yeah. Starling. I broke so. my sterling yesterday. <gasps> like, but, for well, remember my mom said that it was tilting to one side? Uh huh. Well, the, um, I went to switch out the bobbin and the whole front of the thing popped out. Um, like the, where the rubber grommets are in the front, that whole top section came off. But I was on a Zoom call with the Daedalus folks when it happened, and oh, they walked me through it. fixing it. It was awesome. So, so it's was all it... fixed now. So a screw had come loose. Oh, okay. Through vibration and shipping and, you know, in the summer in the South, like, humidity becomes a huge factor with stuff. Um, so I had to, uh, like screw the screw like take out the rubber grommet put it back in um and screw the screw back down which sounds really simple but then i forgot to put the drive band back on and so then oh, i yeah. had to you know like everything that you know goes into it but it was like a super easy fix and when i was like oh my god my head of my wheel just came off she was like if it really did we will send you a new one like <laughs> but she uh walked me rebecca Rebecca walked me through everything and was super kind because I had my little mini panic attack. She even offered to send me an Allen wrench if I didn't have one in the right size. <laughs> but I did. That is good customer service. It is. So I had finished my second bobbin. And I have the third on the wheel right now. So this is the Love Apple colorway of Nest in Superwash Merino. So she has like a monthly spin along that goes on. So I decided at the beginning of this month, because August is always so crazy for me, I would go ahead and spin this first so that I wasn't waiting till the last minute. And I'm going to do it as a three ply. And I'm spinning it on my Starling, which is really, really nice. I got um, two hours on Tuesday while I was chatting with my knit night people and then, like, three hours with the data list as, like, a Zoom meeting on Wednesday nights from 
6 p.m. Eastern until like 10 p.m. Eastern. I don't usually, people come in and out. Yeah. Um, and they have all the details on their Facebook group, but it's a really nice group of people. And if you are a spinner, whether you're using the Daedalus wheels or not, they're super welcoming. So, yeah. And they're super we helpful. Put together a list of like known repeating virtual get togethers yeah. and put it on our um i would have to know more than that one <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> and i don't know I any know. because i don't attend them because yeah. i attend enough zoom meetings every day to make me sick to my stomach like i it's it's enough that's how last week was for me like i ended up not going to any of the zoom meetups that i usually do um just because I had been issuing stuff so often, like textbooks and laptops, like staring at a screen, even wearing my blue light glasses all day, mm. I was still getting um, headaches. So I'm sure stress had nothing to do with that. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> stress doesn't play a factor. That's invisible. It's not real. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've gotten, so I'm behind on my, I typically try to spend a pound a month, so I'm behind on that right now, because it is the 13th, and I haven't even spun four ounces. This, I did finish eight ounces last week, but I haven't really been spinning a whole lot, but hopefully I'll get back to it. Um, what have you been reading? Oh, I haven't been reading a lot. Something changed, like... It's funny because I turned 40 last week, right? And something changed like in my, I don't know, brain wavelength. Like I've been feeling tired earlier, which is great because usually I can't really convince myself to go to bed until 1130 or midnight at the earliest. But for the last two weeks straight, I've been waking up before my alarm which wow. is irritating. I don't want to wake up before my alarm. I want all the <laughs> sleep I can get. I'm like a greedy, greedy child. Like, I want my sleep. Yeah. But I've been waking up, and I, I can't get back to sleep. So usually the dogs and I will sit outside for a while um, in the morning. But um, It's a nice time to sit outside. So what time are you getting up? Like, my alarm goes off at 7.45 uh. on weekdays. Um, and because my work commute is so reasonable, um, all I have to do in the morning is like let the dogs out, feed the cats, and you know get a, a soda and sit down and start my work day. So there's a Dr Pepper shortage. That's what Michael was telling. Me. Someone just texted me. I, I, uh, I think there's an aluminum cam shortage. I had heard that for a while. Well, I don't know, but I ordered Walmart grocery pickup. Um, and picked it up yesterday, and they substituted my Diet Dr. Pepper for Diet Dr. Thunder. Ugh. And it is not the same. It's, like, syrupy sweet. Yeah, it is not the same. Um, but I switched. Be okay, so we're still not talking about books, but people tend to find it entertaining when we go off on tangents. So, <laughs> forgive me. But, so, we've been, since the whole... COVID pandemic and everybody's staying at home all the time thing. We've been going through a lot of groceries, which uh, is understandable because mm -hmm. Kobe's home all day. Yeah. And so am We're I. We're saving and money on that school lunch. That school lunch saved me money. That's <laughs> like what, three fifty a day? or I can't remember how much it was. But um, anyway... Kobe eats more than three dollars and fifty cents worth of groceries right? at lunch. Uh, so I ordered from a uh, grocery pickup, and I'm gonna do that from now on because I finally figured out I was using this service called Shipped, and so and there I'm sure there's other services like it, but essentially you use their website and they're connected to different grocery stores, and you make a list and um they'll have somebody go shop and that person will text you if something's out of stock they'll be mm -hmm. like you know do you want this substitute or do you want no substitute or whatever um they'll send you pictures and and all that and so the service is great um and it was like 14 bucks a month so if i got more than two deliveries a month it was worth it for me mm -hmm. and but i 
found out by accident because um, the last time I was talking to the guy who was shopping for me, I was like, you know, do they have any specials on soda, uh, like Diet Dr. Pepper or Coke products or any of that? And he said, yeah. And so he sent me a picture, like a three for $11 or something. I said, okay, so get me three Diet Dr. Peppers. And he did and, you know, got it to me. And I went and looked at my receipt later and I didn't get the sale price. And I'm like, that's weird. So I got online and started talking to their customer service people. And you don't get the store sale price for anything. Oh, yeah, like if they have it for sale on their website, you get shipped sales price, but you don't get the oh. store sale price on anything. So you're paying a lot more. Yeah. Like, because that, you know, that little 50 cents here or 20 cents there yeah, adds, adds up. up. So, you know, again, the service is great and there may come a time where I need it every great now and then, but from now on, I'm just going to try to do pickups. Um. Anyway, I don't know why I went off on that tangent. Target's really good for pickups for like in general. Yeah, for, but like, they Target. don't frozen food. They don't, but like if you're doing like uh Diet Dr Pepper or whatever. Yeah. And I find that they tend to like Bubbly was in short supply, which is a Pepsi product earlier this year, like in March. I guess mm-hmm. people were stockpiling fizzy water. And um, they had it when, like, Kroger was sold out. So, mm-hmm. like, if Kroger's out of something and it's something like soda or yeah. stuff like that, uh, they were out of soup for a long time and Target still had it. Yeah, I like Kroger here, but my Kroger only has six spots for pickup. And it's, like, I don't know if it's just my area or what, but... Like these moms in their enormous SUVs will like shank you to get a spot. It is ridiculous. So see the Horn Lake one always has spaces available. Maybe I need to start picking up somewhere else because it's I mean it's crazy. I even try going. It could also be the time that you're doing it. Yeah, I mean I'm here. I I try not to do them anytime around like anytime between like four o'clock and eight o'clock at night. When people are getting off work or whatever, but it, no, it's I still do bad. Seven a.m. pick up. Oh, well, I don't do that. <laughs> Seven to eight, and usually it's pretty open at the Horn Lake one, anyway. Um. Okay, so I don't remember why. I went so on that. you were talking about books and going outside and reading in the mornings. Oh no, I was talking. Right. We got off on my body changing and deciding I needed to get up at a certain time. Okay. But that's because of that, I've been going to bed earlier, so I haven't been reading as much. So that's I how that started. You. Sorry. Um, so, but I am reading a book. It's a male female like shifter paranormal called Spiked mm-hmm. by C.P. Ryder. It and good? it's about, um, so far, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure there's more in the series. I, I only just started this one. It's Kindle Unlimited. But it's um, a woman who's a telepath, but also has the ability to spike, like, put mental energy into other people's brains and, like, kill them with it. Ooh. So, um, and of course, the hot alpha shifter is interested in her. So, I mean, as you where is this going to go? I just don't know. (laughs) There's three books in the series. Yeah, it's good. I mean, so far, I'm only about halfway through it, but it's good and I'm still re-listening to the stand but I had to sort of take a break because um a it's kind of depressing right because 99.99 percent of the people in the world die but um also like culturally it was written in the 80s and there's a lot of things in there that make you cringe yeah when you listen to the it doesn't stand up yeah, I mean, overall, it's still a good book, but it's like, it's, and I, I understand it's there intentionally, and it's part of, like, the characters acting this way, you know, that's part of who those characters are, and it's not necessarily who the author is, but it's just hard, so um, I had to, I had to take a break from it, and I've been interspersing with 
episodes of my dad wrote a porno again so um will they point, be back I, for another season i don't know like originally they were going to be touring almost a whole year yeah so they didn't announce that that usually they start in the fall like in september or late august Mm -hmm. um but they haven't announced anything yet so i don't know i would hope that they would be using the time in quarantine to make some kind of content but i don't know i mean yeah they haven't announced anything at least that i'm aware of so that's all three of their full-time jobs right uh well i think they took time off um they took like a hiatus because i know alice still she had a a radio program with the bbc until last year where she finally left it because this was taking up too much time i mean and you got to be doing well if you're leaving a job with the bbc yeah um and i know james is a producer and I think Jamie does radio stuff as well, but I'm I can't remember. But they all work in the entertainment industry, um, which makes sense. Yeah, which you know it allows them to sort of take time when they need it because you're, I you know unless you're on a a really big like weekly show or something, you have the ability. I think. I mean, in my head, it seems like you would have the ability <laughs> to. Um just not accept jobs for a little while and it not negative you know anyway so what about you what have you been reading i'm reading so i had started this on um libro fm a couple weeks ago and then it got kind of put i wasn't listening to anything really i was listening i was re-listening to uh the alana andrews books because the new one's coming out but i haven't been listening even that i'm only like an hour in i haven't been listening a ton but today i went to target drive through pickup because i needed to get plastic bins for work and while i had ordered those i also got milano cookies well yeah (laughs) i mean i mean i was paying for it anyways like it's not like the school was paying for it and i got scissors because all my scissors at work have disappeared if you're a teacher, you understand that completely. <laughs> and pens. Uh, so as I was driving over there, because the Target that has the drive-in pickup is near Leslie's house, um, I started listening to Clap When You Land. And this is by Elizabeth Acevado. I'm probably mispronouncing that. I need to listen to an interview with her. I need to find some... Um, book trailers with her po- of her poet x book or with fire on high is another one of her books um so this is her newest one that came out i think in may and one thing that i like about poet x that i also like about this book is it is a book in verse so hmm. it is written like poetry um and one line as i was listening today that i really really liked one thing that i like about books in verse is like people have to be very specific with word choice Mm -hmm. like there's not a lot of like filler language so she's talking about um she sees her poppy her father once a year he comes for the summer she lives in the dominican republic and she had told him last year that she um so she said i told poppy last year this dream of pre-med at that prestigious university in the heart of the city that he calls home and he laughed He said I could be a doctor here. He said it'd be better for me to visit Columbia, the country, than for him to spend money at another fancy school. I did not laugh with him. He must have realized his laugh was like one of those paper shredders making sad confetti of my hopes. He did not apologize. And it opens with that um, that reflection. And her poppy comes every year for like June, July, August, and her birthday's in July. And she goes to greet him at the airport and his plane has crashed. Oh. And everyone aboard was killed. And he visits her for those three months. She lives with her aunt. Her mother's deceased. Um, he lives in New York City. And she finds out this switches points of view to another young lady who's called into the principal's office at her school where her mother is waiting because her father's plane has crashed and he has died. Spoiler, they're the same person oh yeah so he's kept this these painful secrets Mm -hmm. his whole life um that 
you know, there was an ocean dividing them from between the Dominican Republic and New York City, and he kept that a secret. And now that secret has come to light. So it's really, really good. And the way she writes is just amazing. Um, Poet X is an incredible book, and I was really excited to get this one. And the audiobook is only, because it's a novel in verse, it's only like five hours. Mm. So even though it's a larger book, um, it is a really, really quick read. And I just appreciate a good novel in verse. I If I had told, like, talking to past Laura, like, teenage Laura, I would have been, like, a novel in verse. Ugh. Cause I, I don't know that I've poetry. ever read a novel in verse. Oh, you should read Poet X. It's good. Um, or this one when I'm done with it. But she is one of the most popular uh, authors in my young adult section at my um, in my building. Her and Kwame Alexander also writes in verse a lot. And um, there's a few other people who do. But yeah, I'm super excited to read. Now that I've gotten kind of like that hook, mm -hmm. I'm like, yes, this is so tomorrow. Um, when I'm not issuing laptops at work, I might be doing some... Uh, I was putting the books that people graciously donated. So this was actually a copy that was donated. So I've been putting them into the system and getting the covers on them and the barcodes and stuff so that they're ready to be checked out next week. Um, so, and I do have an Amazon wish list of it and it's never too late to donate. It's up there year round. We always keep it at the bottom of our show notes. So yeah, I'm and this so, is as not I'm for Laura that, personally. This no. is for Laura's. This library is which is a public mississippi school so there's not yep. a ton of funding so that's why that wish list is there yep um so yeah and the cover is just gorgeous too i mean laura's house is basically a library it is with books that i buy myself yeah <laughs> i uh actually spent a hundred dollars buying books off my own wish list on amazon last night because mm. i was like they're gonna be so excited when they see these books like i can't yeah. So uh, I went through my wish list and I bought like everything that was under ten dollars a book. <laughs> and there's still like some of them I needed multiple copies. Yeah. Uh, so the multiple copies are books that I'm going to book talk like this, or uh, that my teachers have told me that they're book talking this year because I want to make sure that because our teachers cannot use their classroom libraries, um, that I have enough copies in the library of things that they book talk as well. And is that like a hygiene thing that they yeah. can Yeah, well, anytime something's touched. Right. Um, we're trying to not share materials as much as possible. With library books, if um, they're touched, they have to be quarantined for 72 hours. Because a lot of mine have the plastic covers on them. Oh, okay. And 72 hours. And it, I might go a little bit longer. My plan right now is... Um, so... I am uploading all my lessons to Schoology and recording a lot of videos. So I've been wearing headphones and doing what we do now, mm -hmm. uh, but using QuickTime or um, we have another product called like VR Spot or something like that, that we can record in. And so I'm uploading all my lessons to um, Schoology as well as four book talks that I'm doing a week and then four book talks on the internet that I find that are like the author's reading mm -hmm. or um, book trailers that like Random House or Penguin have produced like publishing companies have produced and then uh, what that gives me time to do is um, the teachers can play those at any time that they have free time. And I'm able to, instead of delivering books every two weeks, deliver books every week. So I have a cart. Well, I'm getting a cart, hopefully. They were all sold out, <laughs> which was really upsetting. But um, I found a plastic Rubbermaid cart that I can use instead of a book cart. And... Um, I'll have one for upstairs, one for downstairs, because I'm in a two-floor building that does With not no have elevator. an elevator. Leslie went to that school. Yes, I did. Um, so I will be delivering books. So Tuesdays, I'll be delivering to sixth grade. Wednesdays, I'll be delivering to um, seventh grade. Thursdays, I'll be delivering to eighth grade. I'll be uh, collecting their books and keeping them in bins. 
Friday, I will actually be driving to kids' houses and delivering books that way. Wow. Um, so whatever they put on hold, I'll yeah. check out to them and then deliver. And then Mondays will be my like check-in day and pull everything that has been placed on hold and get it ready for the week. So things that will be quarantined um, for over that 72-hour yeah. period that way, too, because it'll be over the weekend. So books that I collect, like, on Tuesday will be quarantined for even Almost longer. a solid week, yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, just to be on the safe side, I would love having kids in my library. I love them being able to touch books, but I can't follow around yeah. every single kid. Well, it's um, unrealistic, yeah. And every book they touch, even to look at uh poll so i have like posters everywhere throughout the school with a qr code with a bitmoji of me that says looking for a good book oh one on hold and they can qr code it and it takes them to the car catalog and they can place a book on hold that way you're using qr codes you're so fancy i, I am and i printed out a bunch of bookmarks today too oh i'm super fancy i am like the bitmoji qr code queen <laughs> My Schoology is all Bitmoji. <laughs> I mean, that's what kids respond to. So. Well, like, it's like uh, you can open discussion threads and um, so everyone can see the reply. And so at the end of a lesson, I have one if they have any questions. But, like, there's a lot of question mark Bitmoji. So <laughs> I have, like, seven different question Bitmojis. Um, and it's it's been fun. It's so funny because... <laughs> One of my coworkers made a sign for her door that says, like, recording videos, do not enter. Because we all get interrupted when we mm -hmm. start to record. Like, inevitably, someone comes in. And she got interrupted four times, even with that sign on her door today. And wow. she's like, I, just, I put in, like, we have these um, metal pegs in case there is an emergency, yeah. like a shooter. <laughs> like a school shooter. <laughs> she's like, I'm putting in my pegs and no one can open the door. Ugh. That's an innovative use. Yeah. So I can't do that in the library because I can't. I also have doors that don't open that direction. So, but anyway. You know what I've always seen? I don't, we probably talked about this before, but mm -hmm. like this school building with no elevator is literally across the street from an elevator factory. Like, <laughs> it was. Literally across was. the street. That's a, like, smart car production facility now. Oh, is it? Yeah. Dover. It Dover I don't know. If, for a yeah, long time. Dover Elevators, because I have a book series when I moved into my library. They were, it had been donated, I guess, and it was the history of the Dover Elevator Company. <laughs> it was, like, a seven-part volume. <laughs> I bet that one's always checked out. <laughs> that one got weeded in uh, 2006. <laughs> But yeah. <laughs> there's still that spice place beside yeah, it. Yeah, it's Newlywed Foods. It used to be Flavor Right. Oh, so it's Newlywed Foods. I think they still do spices and stuff. They're Kitty Corner, and that um lot right away, like right across, is for sale. And I keep oh. hoping someone will like buy it and put a gas station there. Yeah, because that would be amazing. <laughs> I would yeah, like there's always cows grazing, or there was it. when I was in school. Oh, see, there haven't been cows there in a long time. It had grown up and gotten, like, over, like, yeah. become overrun, and they just mowed it. So I think maybe they've got someone interested in buying it. All the trees on the other side of the... Y'all don't really care, but yeah, there's railroad tracks right by my school. So it's my school, Newlywood Foods, railroad tracks, and the whole, like, right-hand side... Um, when you come towards the school was all wooded and they all they cleared that out and they're doing like a multi-million dollar call center is going in there hmm. but that's on the other side of the railroad tracks on my side of the railroad tracks i want something like a gas station or a dunkin donuts to come in. <laughs> dunkin donuts would be good although i think their donuts are terrible personally but uh yeah, but I like their coffee. Like yeah. a gas station with a Dunkin' Donuts in it, would yeah, be, or other fast food in it. It would, would be probably amazing. be Krispy Kreme here, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm hoping that big Exxon that's going in across from my house, like across from my development, has some good fast food in it. We'll see. 
Um, well, now that you know all about the uh, topography of our well, like Mississippi, <laughs> <laughs> of our little area, um, what else? Uh, I don't played Animal Crossing at all this week. Oh uh, yeah, it's been a couple weeks. weeks since I've since I've played. You should play for the fireworks on Sunday, though. The fireworks are good. That's the last time I played. It's very soothing. And you get little sparklers that you get to play with. Mm. And bubbles. Yeah, I don't care. I love bubbles. As evidenced uh, by my dinosaur rolling, roaring bubble gun in my house. It's pretty amazing. It is. Pro loves it, too. Nope. And that she makes side eye with it, and <laughs> she was running away, and now it's just become side eye. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. I don't know that I have anything else. Okay. Um. Well, I'm so, yeah. to heal, which is exciting. That is exciting. That's progress. Mm-hmm. Um, I've finished two squares, and I'm on my third one. So that's. You know, less exciting, but also, also progress. progress. Um, but yeah, so we hope you guys have a great week and weekend. And um, um, we will talk to you again next week. Bye. bye, y'all. I ended one of my work videos with bye, y'all. <laughs> Actually, I think I've ended every work video with bye, y'all.